Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy DJ Fanatic at soundsforproducers.com. Welcome to the official, this is actually the first episode interview with a fellow producer of mine. Um, that way, you know, we're trying something different and we always want to bring value to the community. And we were just kind of chatting it up on IG and um, I thought it was kind of cool. We touched on a subject that I thought would be perfect for an interview and also just kind of let it ride like talk about whatever uh that we can talk about for the uh, producer community so let me not mess up your name like i did that one time on ig <laughs> live and i'll just let you introduce yourself we have is king rome uh if you're wondering why i threw the x's in there i spell it k-x-n-g-r-x-m-e i'd love to tell you there's a deep story behind it but it's a one word answer and that's google <laughs> you know i forgot about that i think you told me that at the meetup right yeah yep 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 like and and i you know branding is something i take very seriously and i love it and i help other people with it and working on it for myself so i could spin up a story <laughs> about how the, the x is actually the hourglass and that's my logo but nah i just did it because of google oh <laughs> uh, so basically you googled a name for uh to be a producer right say again you Googled your producer name, basically. Yes. Well, because the, the, now the name King Rome actually has a story behind it, but the spelling of it was just Google. So Rome is just, it took me, I used to go by a different name back in the day because I'm a rapper first, then producer. That's how I got into producing because I got tired of paying for beats because I couldn't afford them. So I was like, let me just learn how to make them myself. Totally um, forgot about that, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I was going by the super creative name of Young Jay and I hated it <laughs> so i was like i gotta come up with a name that represents me and who i am it took me three years to come up and i went through some bad ones <laughs> oh yeah yeah young yeah. jay doesn't really have much pizzazz <laughs> no, uh i do i do like king rome that's dope man i i like that yeah, so, um, so rome and 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 pardon me for being a cliche but you know rome wasn't built in a day and and i'm naturally a late bloomer in life so you know, it was my story, literally. So that's where I came up with that. And the king just comes from, you know, manifesting your own greatness coming from within. Everybody's got a king within them. And I'm hoping that using my platform to help everybody find that within themselves. I'm also a huge Sacramento Kings fan, so that helps too. Hey, okay. Nice, man. Great story. And I think so it's so it's important. Like, yeah, my bad. Go ahead. Yeah, that's how I came up with the name. I just wanted to make sure that it, it defined who I was. Um, so, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It was defined over time. That's my my mantra. It's not so much of a slogan as it is my life. So, yeah, that's that's where that came from. Dope. Dope. Yeah. Stick with that name. Filling it, man. Uh, <laughs> just a background for the viewers uh, that watch this. Uh, we actually met. Um, some of y'all know that I'm a Beat Stars ambassador. And we met... I don't know which meetup, but we met a few meetups back. Uh, was it last year? I think it was yes, last. You, were, you were leading it. Um, it was supposed to be a guest there, but it fell through. So you were rocking it solo. Right, you? right. I remember that. Yeah. 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 I remember. OK. Yeah. Yeah. That's when we met that one. Um, cool. Cool. Yeah. I really like the story of, of your your producer name because I know I always like to ask producers how they got it and being that you know you, you kind of it's an educated name in a way you know it's not just something you made up like childish gambino no no offense <laughs> but oh, you I know had, the story I some bad ones now. <laughs> you, you want to say someone camera so so we can get yeah, some I laughs in to. the comments yeah, I'm gonna keep in the bag because i might keep him as a uh as gotcha. alter ego considering i'm a gemini but uh like uh gemini rose was one of them okay uh, my dog's name is version. rose <laughs> <laughs> go ahead uh, and then there was uh currently anonymous <laughs> anonymous no currently anonymous that was currently the anonymous <laughs> yeah. and then there was, oh here's here's one you'll get a laugh at uh, uh i was trying to like make a play on you know being the goat yeah. So it's like I can't make a play on Michael Jordan. That's too boring. So I, I was like, what about Muhammad Ali? So I was like, Casanova Clay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was like, I was going through a phase in college, and I was really yeah. feeling myself. 
and I was like, yeah, that's gonna be the name. And then, and then at one point, I was calling myself Johnny Greatness, and I was like, God, uh, Johnny yeah. Greatness. Oh yeah, so, man. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> it was also during that same phase of me just really feeling myself. I wasn't very, uh, I wasn't a very likable character at that time. <laughs> hey man, we all have our journey, you know. It's all good. Um, okay, before I forget, I was talking about selling my studio monitors. For anybody that's watching this in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia, I said that backwards, but anyway, area, it doesn't matter which way I say it, but DMV, um, or, no, I'm not shipping nothing. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was talking about selling my monitors, and you might miss out because King Roll might pick it up, but we we're talking about the monitors that he's rocking now which are some M audio uh, monitors. No offense to any company on the video. We keeping this real legit. Um, but uh, what's the story behind these uh, M audio? Yeah, so I was telling him that like, I don't have the greatest monitors in the world. And it's nothing against M audio. I actually love their products. I just happen to have the low end version of <laughs> their monitors. And the funny story is, uh, this was back in college at the time. I was with my homie, uh, DJ Act Right. Uh, and we were going out to, uh, guitar center help him get his studio set up because he was you know he was like yeah let me i want to get in this i want to do this he, he already had an mpc he had some uh, he had a mic but we had to go get the rest of the studio set up so i was like yeah i'll go with you i can you know I, i've been in the game a little bit i can help you out so we get there to the guitar center we shopping around and we get up to the register and i'm like yeah those right there those are the ones i have yeah you should get those and and the guy at the register said oh those are the ones you have i said yeah man i was so excited he said i'm so sorry <laughs> Oh man, see. So not only did I feel def deflated, but it also made me look like a complete <laughs> uh, neophyte. Like, uh, like I didn't know anything. Like what I was talking about, it, it instantly like cut out any credibility I might have. <laughs> <laughs> Humbled me on the spot. <laughs> but hey, you like the price though, right? Yeah. Hey, hey, and, and, and I don't know if y'all been paying attention. But remember when we were talking about the names that I had in college, I was going through a little phase where I was feeling myself. Well, this was during that time. So oh, okay, bye. <laughs> right, I got you. But see, so, it could have sounded better, you know, if if he didn't say anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they could be like these things are dope. <laughs> see how like somebody's information could shape your experience. You see what yes. I mean? Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. But it also taught me like don't know everything bro like and and it, it, it shaped the way i approach things now and i've always been kind of like a don't speak unless you know what you're talking about kind of guy i just thought i knew what i was talking about <laughs> so like get a little more educated before you start yeah yeah exactly yeah that's a good um actually that's a good result because you got something good out of it like it humbled you and me like yo i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> this guy works here so he probably knows all this crap <laughs> in and out and like uh yeah yeah I, I, man don't worry you're not the only one because like so much stuff i bought over the years like i always thought i knew I, it's basically failing to success like i would buy anything i thought was dope but i didn't know that oh it sucks with i bought these headphones were like oh man i don't want to say the company yeah i can't do that Anyway, these headphones are like $400. And I was so excited they finally got in the headphone market. I got them and they were mainly made for like mastering, but there was no low frequencies, no bass. $400 headphones. I had to send them back. I was like, no, I, I can't even make a beat like this. I can't do it. 400 bucks. So luckily through Amazon, they actually refunded me. I was shocked they refunded the full 400, you know, with uh with an open box product so wow. um but yeah we didn't actually uh intro right man I'm, I'm bugging um the first um how long you been producing producing like the first time i touched fl i was in high school but like if we talking seriously uh i i say about 2012 2012 so going on eight years this is my eighth year yeah that's a minute man that's a long time and you're, you're artist as well you mentioned right Yes. So I've been rapping since sixth grade, since I was 12. Um, that's the first time I put pen to paper, you know, and, and I always joke. And, and we're kind of in the DMV community, so I always make a joke when I meet other artists from the area. It's like, yeah, if you're from here, you rap. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody from here at some point has rap. Right. Um, or affiliated with music somehow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we did at the lunch table 
in, 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 in sixth grade. We came up with silly rhymes. I still remember the first song we wrote. It was a, uh, it was a. Uh, I'm not gonna name his name because he hates me bringing the story up. But it's one of my friends who's probably gonna see this. We we made a, a remix to Kanye West. Uh, Gold Digger, but like a KFC version. <laughs> uh, like a like a spoof, yeah. Yeah, but that's the things. That's the thing. Six sixth graders did. We didn't have a whole lot of life experience. We talked about the stuff we knew and liked: macaroni and cheese and chicken. <laughs> right, right. Macaroni and cheese and chicken. <laughs> what was the KFC song about? Was it extra crispy? Was yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was also a still tipping remix. Uh, remember the still tipping off of hoes? It was something like still eating them ho hoes. <laughs> oh, yeah, still. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys are into food. <laughs> what was that? Ho hoes, do they even exist anymore? That's a throwback right there. Yeah, they were, um, I think, Hostess. They went out of business. They went bankrupt and somebody bought them back. So they're trying to reintroduce it, I, I think. That song back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, who does all the spoof beats? Um, he did the Thanksgiving one. Man, my bad. I'm, I'm doing this on camera. What's his name? Um, he, he calls himself the Remix God. He did like that beans, greens, tomatoes, and oh, I gotta check that out. Um, yeah, I've heard it, but I, I don't think I ever saw the original source video. You know how stuff gets shared around. Right, right. Yeah, he goes hard with that, and that's his niche. He's actually on Producer Grind. He did an interview on there oh. as well. Um, yeah, I like the channel. Suede, I think. Remix got Suede. My bad for forgetting, bro. Um, hey, but, you some homework. I'm going to go check it out. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about producers doing like a niche thing like that? Just finding like the most outrageous video and just making a beat around it. <laughs> What's your thoughts about that? I, f I feel like if, if that's your lane, that's dope. Um, it, I feel like we all, it, it helps to have one. Um, it, it can help you stand out in the market. Um, you know, having gone to school for PR and marketing, that's something that I tend to focus on. And it's always easy to tell other people to do it, even though I struggle with it myself. Mm -hmm. So finding where I'm in that lane, um, you said it and you're not the first person. And, and it happens a lot. A lot of people tell me my music sounds like, you know, gaming music. And and when I first started making beats, it, it used to offend me because it's like, now nah, I'm trying to make hits, bro. But like now that I'm seasoned in the game, it's like, well, that makes a lot of sense. What do I spend a lot of my time doing? Gaming. So a hmm. lot of that is seeped into my subconscious. So a lot of my songs sound like that. And so like maybe that's a lane for me eventually. But um, having a lane and, and, and knowing that, and if you can own it, why not be a king in that domain? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Um, well, if you're going to touch all of them, you better be nice at all of them. Right, right. And it's, it's kind of spreading yourself thin, too, if you try to try too many things, you know? Um, I you mentioned that, some like being both producer and artist. Sometimes trying to do both gets in the way of the other, and I'm, I'm, I'm still working on finding that balance. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, man, because it's it's totally two different hats, two different ways of creativity. Um, you mentioned something. Um, have you read? Uh, shout out to homie Curtis King, man. Have you read his book? Uh, no, I have not. But um, you recommend it. Yeah, definitely recommend it. Uh, what's the title? I got a few that I've been reading. More on the business. Is this more on the creative side or more on the business side? Because I know he's he's real big in both. Um, it was kind of like an origin. It's both actually. Towards the end, he talks more about business. I'm trying to find a copy so I can tell you the name of it. But I'm sure he has a cover on his IG or whatever or YouTube. I'm sure. On um, the prosperous producer, I think. How I turned my business to a six-figure business something like that i think it's a prosperous producer but um he mentioned in the book like the early chapters that's all people said was my beats sound video gamey because he um <laughs> it's funny because he said the same thing you're saying and his beats he actually made it on this um old playstation game it's actual like a, a game where you can make beats on it and i remember this game it's super old school but um was it for PSP? Yeah. Well, they had a. It started on PlayStation One for, and then they transferred it because it was a successful product. Um, but uh, every game, every beat he made, he made with these sounds in the game. So, and then as he progressed, you know, get better equipment, it still had his video gamey sound. So, um, yeah, he said the same thing, and that's why I was like, "Yo, have you read his book? You can kind of relate to it." You know what I mean? And he took it as a defense. Oh, no. 
Yeah. Stay lesson. Yeah, really good book. Um, yeah, it would have been dope. I actually uh, went out to Nashville recently. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, oh uh, yeah, the, the the producer house, right? Yeah, the Midi Money uh, group okay. with uh, yeah, yeah I saw that, Rick Barkman. I was like, wait, hold up, I know him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh awesome, man. What are your uh, thoughts about him and and what he's teaching you? Because you said you were a part of um, one of his programs, I think. Yeah, I, I got his uh, intro level. Is, uh, Money? Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> premium. Premium. I mean, it's worth it. It's good information. I just had to like go on the low end just because my my situation's a little modest right now. But uh, it it definitely opened my mind to thinking about things differently than I ever had. Because as creators, what do we do? We create. But at some point, you have to transition. If you're really going to be bowed in this business, you got to start looking not only as the craft as a business, but yourself as a business. And that, that he helped me reshape my mind on that. Um, setting up my LLC uh, getting now one thing about branding I always was locked in on from the second I knew what my name was going to be even before I had any content I went and claimed all the names the domains and everything that I had set up but like actually going further in protecting that stuff on the business end Mm -hmm. um, it's like you said it's a it's a it's called the fan base blueprint I know he's changing his programs up so I don't know if that one's still available but uh, at the time that's what it was called and it's just getting it's like an intro level of setting your stuff up and he's definitely big on the social media stuff um Mm -hmm. so i think his content is solid um there are a lot of people out there with dope information so um and this is not to devalue any of them um Mm -hmm. if it's just to hype them up a little bit they're all great um you know find one find somebody that connects with you i just i connected with his story so i'm the way i shop because i don't spend money (laughs) Mm -hmm. um i i usually invest in the people behind the product before i ever invest in the product itself it's just how i operate Mm -hmm. and and I was sold from his story. So uh, then I looked into the product, you know, and I I uh, I was joined his live videos and and you know watched his seminars that he put out for free long before I ever bought anything. It's just the way. Uh, what's that uh, that marketing concept? The seven points of contact. Okay. You, have, you got me on that. Seven points of what? What's it, what's it called? It's like seven points of contact with a consumer before they ever purchase your product. Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe that number is a little off, but basically <clears throat> that's the real point of commercials. It's not, you know, the point of a commercial isn't for somebody watching and say, okay, I just saw that Wendy's commercial. I'm going to go buy a burger. No, it's, it's supposed to happen subconsciously the more you see it so that when you're out and you pass it, it's like, oh, that's right. I saw that commercial. Let me go get that. Let me go try that. It's like, that's why they air Sonic commercials here and there are no Sonics around. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got you. So that when you're on the road, it's like, oh, isn't that that thing with the two weird dudes in the car talking about corn dogs? Let me try that. <laughs> right, right, right. It's so, b- branding and marketing, basically. That. Yeah. So what is your like what kind of advice or pointers would you give for producers about branding since you have like, you know, some of this introductory experience? Stay active, Um, stay and and. I'm saying that as somebody who's fallen off of, on that a little bit lately. There mm-hmm. is a reason behind that, but we can get into a lot, that a little later. But, you know, stay consistent. Um, even if you're not posting multiple times a day, at least post daily. Um, make sure that you're providing some type of value. And value presents itself in many different ways, whether that's information, emotional value, um, mm-hmm. the humor, mm-hmm. um, our our, our our friend Jay Reese knocking is really good at that. You know, just you know, really dope content every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very consistent. We need capital also, like, you know, just providing value daily so that it's not always, you know, when you see their posts or their, their story, you're not going to always jump right to their page. But when you start seeing that constantly, it starts seeping in your subconscious. Uh, so now when I open up my IG and you look at the little circles at the top of the stories, if I see one of them on there, I click on it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I have a consistent history of providing cool content. So it's like, oh, let me check this out because I know they're probably doing something cool. So just staying active, staying consistent and and providing value is it's a baseline. You know, we can get into more complicated stuff later. But as far as just getting started, staying in the people's eyes, because we live in an ADD generation. That's what I call it. You know, the attention span is shorter than ever, especially on social media. 
Mm -hmm. um, you gotta you gotta stop the scroll. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it, and this is a perfect segue for what you're just talking about. Um, in our conversation, you said I don't like, I don't dislike social media as a tool. I dislike it as a culture. If that makes more sense, you want to speak on that a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, having the background that I have, um, I went to school for PR, um, communications, marketing falls along that along those lines and nowadays it's all the same stuff it used to be separate businesses but now it's all kind of under the same umbrella mm -hmm. um social media is an excellent tool man you can just look at some of the movements that have gotten started in recent years uh you know me too black lives matters and all other types of you know social organizations just just through the power of social media reaching your audience like it's powerful you can do great things with it um so as a tool building an audience it's outstanding the part where i was you know discussing not liking it so much as a culture it's just it's also very surface level it's very um highlighted it's, it's not always telling the whole story yeah. it's also a lot of, it's also kind of fake <laughs> people posing a lot of posturing mm -hmm. um, and and i understand it to a point like of course i want to get my best angles and i want to put my worst shots up but at the same time it's like there's a lot of posturing on social media and, and you can a lot of times I can see right through it mm. and, and it's and being that I can see through it um, I wouldn't say I'm immune because I fall victim to the same stuff too like oh man why don't I have what that person has but you know I snap out of it but not everybody has that, that mental fortitude or the, the life experience to know that this isn't everybody's story and that you know that picture on the beach was taken eight months ago instead of yesterday this person isn't really making all that money <laughs> but I, I can actually affect people man. and, and yeah. it's not great for your, for your your morale it's also not great for your time because like i can tell you from experience just sitting on instagram uh even when i don't plan to i can sit there for an hour it's like damn that's just lose a whole hour of productivity yeah and, yeah and that's where the, the the divide for me is 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 tough because i understand that i need it as a tool as a marketing tool to get on here and really work it because that's the thing about instagram you gotta work it you can't just put something up and expect people to love it yeah it's actually it, it's social networking you know you take off the social part of it you take away the platform it's still networking at the end of the day and networking is work that's why it's called networking <laughs> yeah 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 i feel you on that yeah you broke that down yeah i mean uh, i i can't tell you what huh continue your thought I, I feel like you're going somewhere <laughs> oh yeah i can't tell you how many things i posted and i put so much work into it like for instance, I did a Beat Stars remix contest. Shout out to Ella Ren. Uh, thank you for the love for that beat. I put like this elaborate video I edited of me making the beat. Basically, the beat is playing throughout, right? It's a remix I made uh, for the contest, and it's me in the studio. So basically, I'm doing a lot of editing work, um, fading in and blending the video, her video and my video together, and doing all these effects. And like, as soon as I post it, I'm like, yo, it's gonna blow up. My IG is gonna go crazy. Yeah, like it, it took an hour, like maybe two hours for it to start catching on. And I was like, why, why am I so fixated on likes and stuff? <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's it's more. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, at, at first you're so pressed to get these likes and and comments, but at the same time, like, how does that? I know it's like accolades that feels good but how does that really what does that mean to you to not like focus too much on that type of result because there's different la layers of results there's likes comments and then there's somebody hitting you up saying i love this can you make more music for me because she did hit me up and say like this is beautiful thank you i'm feeling it and i really that was the stamp i was like yeah i don't, I don't even care about the contest being that she liked it, you know, because I was making it for her and I put a lot of work into it. But what are your thoughts about um, something along those lines? If that made any sense. <laughs> no, I, I, I feel you. And I'm, I'm, I'm about to contradict myself a couple of times. So I apologize in advance. But <laughs> it, it, it's hard. To, this one, it's not a black and white kind of discussion. It's a lot of nuance. So uh, I'm going to sit here. and, Of course, I, bro, I love seeing them, them hearts come in. 
them hearts just start adding up. It's like, okay, they like this. But at the end of the day, I don't give a damn about likes. I need engagement. You know, um, but what does that mean? You know, mm-hmm. a like doesn't feel at the end of the day. Um, how do I turn that into activity? And, and that's what I'm, um, that's the, that's the place where I'm kind of stuck right now. And, and you know, I, I don't want to position myself as like this superb expert because I'm learning from experience too. We in this together, we learn at the same time. Um, you know, I, I, I've been posting, and so in the month of January, I, I was pretty consistent. I, I think I missed maybe the entire month where I was posting original content every day. Every post in the month of January I put up was a, a, a you know, design that I created. Uh, I've been I've been learning graphic design too, teaching myself. Oh, dope. And every post from the month of January that I put up was one of my own designs. And I was just watching to see, you know, what does well, what do they like? Um, do they like inspiration? Do they like bravado? Um, my best performing post was me, uh, was a picture of me like screaming and uh i made it like a because i'm a big godzilla fan i love the monster verse um and, and kaiju and all that stuff i'm a big nerd at the end of the day so it was like i basically put myself in the godzilla position and, and it was a lyric from one of my songs oops i just dropped an easter egg uh that said godzilla couldn't body me <laughs> and it's yeah. like stomping yeah. through dc um godzilla style and yeah. that one formed the best out of all of them i was like geez i'm out here trying to inspire y'all but y'all, at the end of the day it's rap y'all like that y'all like that bravado <laughs> yeah yeah so but now i have to figure out okay i see what they like how do i turn that into them consuming more of my content well it would help if i had some wouldn't it? um i'll get to that story in a little bit but uh like I, why i told you that i haven't consistent lately it's a bit of a frustrating story but um you know at the end of the day it's not about just like if you're in it just for likes cool go after the likes but like i'm in it to turn this into a business i want people coming back to my artistry you know, streaming my songs, coming out to my concerts when I eventually have them. So um, it's a daily war trying to figure out uh, how to use this outstanding platform that we have. Here's another thing we got to, uh, and this is, I'm trying to remember which person that I follow was saying this. It's a bunch of them. And, and, and we as artists and producers, mainly producers, because we're selling a, a tangible product, need to, actually, this might have been at the Beat Stars meetup. Is this something I yeah. said? Because <laughs> um, I get I get the to own our, Yeah, we have to own our audience, man. You know, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter are great, but at the end of the day, we need to be using those as commercials for our websites and and our our unique um, platforms ourselves. Because at the end of the day, you're using these platforms; they own that content. Exactly. So we have to find a way to yeah use them because they are great tools but at the end of the day they're an ends to a mean not the end itself um you know i right now i operate mainly off of ig I, I if you look at my twitter i have maybe like 10 tweets and that's that's on me for not staying on top of that but i i need to, my goal is to get that to a point where my website is the landing page you know that's where i need to get everybody to and then you know start building an email list or a phone list or why not both um i got that from music entrepreneur club um Dane yeah one yeah shout out to my peoples yeah mm-hmm. yeah oh you were there too that's right <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah shout out to dame and pain one yeah yeah that was uh, one of the biggest things we talked about just owning your audience and making sure that you're sending them somewhere where you control it um so that's that's the real instagram game the real social media game is getting them back to our our own i cannot believe this word is blanking on me it'll hit me later in the conversation but uh native our own native audience got you and ryan leslie talked about it too how he turned what was it like 175 sales right 175,000 sales into like a multi-million dollar success story i was like yeah like that one. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah that's what uh his his business model super phone and uh, I actually saw his, um, he was on a panel in LA when I went to the ASCAP Expo out there. Mm. Shout out to ASCAP. Thank you for my royalty payments um, <laughs> and all that get, you do. Get really. on your PROs, y'all, if you're not. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, right now. You're watching this video right after it. Make sure you get on your PROs and, you know, register your stuff properly and you don't want to be missing out on money that you can get with your music straight up so um but you said so much but i want to backtrack way back okay. <laughs> um um barker yes y'all probably don't know who he is uh richard barker is the former um manager of taylor swift 
and he has an awesome story i met him in person at the midi money house uh shout out to gabe from legion beats shout out to uh anno domini from anno domini nation oh, really appreciate you guys huh anno domini he was there yeah yeah he was there shout That's out to my boy busy from busy works beats he was there as well <laughs> And shout out to Dylan from uh, Producer Grind. It was nice meeting y'all in person, man. It was crazy. Yeah, it, it was lit, man. Uh, they, uh, they plan on doing next year, so you should come. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I so, definitely that. Yeah. If you don't get a link, I'll send you a link. Yeah. Right. So, and I'm happy to say I'm actually working a part, working with them this year, with their team. So, I said it on camera. So, you start seeing your boy doing new things. That's why. So, shout out, shouts out to them, man. Um Man, I dropped a bomb on here. I wasn't even gonna say all that, <laughs> but it's all, it's all good. Hey, that's why you need to be tuned in to Sounds for Producers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. You get to see the inside scoop of what's working for producers and myself, and also, you know, just some some game, man. And what else did I say that I was gonna jump back to? Um, so I shot out everybody I wanted to regarding that. Oh, what do you think of the um, 80-20 rule? I heard that, I don't know if I have this right, but um, 80% you as a person that you're posting and 20% business. Like, do you, have you ever heard of that? Uh, you're breaking news to me. Oh, okay. Um, I, I was like, okay, how's he about to make football work with producing? Cause <laughs> that's where my mind went when I heard 80-20. Oh, 80-20, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they say like, um, I, I'm, sh- I'm trying to figure out where I heard this from. It might have been Music Entrepreneur Club. Um, yeah, and shout out to Cato too. I, I didn't shout out to homie Cato, man. Um, Stamp that. What was, um, I think it was the Music Entrepreneur Club where they were saying like, don't always just post beats because it people see um, that and get kind of turned off. But, um, well, but I know some people that are very successful all they do is post beats and then they have a separate ig just for like personal family stuff so i don't think it's just a black and white thing i think it's kind of like um anybody can do whatever they want you know what i mean like if it works for you don't try to change it up i know some people do they have one account and it's their producer name and they'll do like this is my dog this is what i had to eat this is whatever and here's my beat They'll do it just like that and just keep cycling. But I know very successful people have separate accounts. Like they'll have their business IG and then they'll have their IG where they do a little bit of, you know, personal posting. So what, what's your thoughts on that type of strategy? Actually, that, that was a perfect segue because I'm about to like get into like a personal internal dilemma I'm having. Uh, I actually do have multiple IGs, but one of them is... Uh, that's my personal one. I haven't posted on there in two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just have, I just have combos with my friends on that one. Uh, so it's basically a dead account. Um, my King Rome account. So I have a King Rome account and one for my production company, but that that's just a shell account right now. I haven't done anything on there. Mm-hmm. So right now the, the dilemma I'm having is, and I have this conversation with my close friends. My, I call them my, uh, my executive board. You know, the ones that are like my tightest circle and, and I run ideas, business ideas past them. We have real, Big picture conversations so so I'm king rome is your artist account yes so oh, okay. right now it's both artist and producer because um i haven't decided how i'm gonna run my second account uh if it's gonna be strictly production and if i'm gonna separate them as different entities or if i'm just gonna I'm still figuring that out yeah yeah but as of now it's it's my sole business account um and right now like the way i position myself publicly when I'm, uh, you know, like when I go to performances, the way I, I position myself is, you know, my my brand, my my mission statement is, is pretty serious. You know, I, I'm all about building up us as a community, building, you know, towards something as an individual. You know, pulling your best you out of you. And and I believe in all that stuff. It's not a front. That's actually what I want to do and and with my music. But also, then it, hey, I'm also a person. There's a person behind that. And I'm not serious all the time. I'm fairly goofy. Like I mentioned before, I'm a little bit of a nerd. I'm a gamer. So I, I've been struggling trying to figure out how do I show all that? Let you know that there's actually a person behind that's not a robot. Because like I, I'm, I'm sure you can attest you, from 
the first time you met me, I can be a little robotic in public. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's all good. That, yeah, how do I show that natural personality while maintaining the brand? So I've been trying to work more of that into. So that's why I, I've been throwing lines like Godzilla couldn't body me in the serious songs, but I'm still showing, hey, like, hey, Godzilla community, I'm part of y'all too. Or mm -hmm. I have a song called Bandicoot where <laughs> it, it's a direct reference to the video game Crash Bandicoot, but it's a song where I'm talking about, like, body in the competition so <clears throat> whoa as far wait as bandicoot wasn't that animal it's like a fox or something yeah it's it's like a it's like a aggressive rodent thing yeah <laughs> yeah i remember that game <laughs> yeah i totally forgot about yeah, that it's a real game. life animal uh, although the ca character they created looks nothing like it but uh, oh, okay. yeah it, it's 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 based off of that um so i um I, I struggle. I didn't know about the eighty twenty rule, but like I'm actually going through that dilemma right now. How much of me do I post, and how much of the brand do I post, and how do I kind of make them cohesive so it's not like I have to wear a mask, um, right? Because uh, at times it feels like that. Because sometimes I just want to be John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I don't. I don't want to be Rome all the time. But like at, at the end of the day, like it's still a big part of who I am. So it's not like I'm putting. A mask on i'm just wearing different hats and and you know wh how i introduce myself changes depending on the room i'm in and and that's that's harder it's hard to display on on social media and, and so as far as the 80 20 rule i might have to you know maybe not that exact thing because social media isn't cookie cutter but i have to figure out a formula that works for me yeah um, while, while we're on the topic uh you want to shout out your ig so people can check you out if you want it's King Rome, but spelled like a millennial. So K X N G R X M E. There you have it, and I think you have a link to your your music too on there, right? In the bio. Yes, I do. Um, right now, I have a single, uh, "Not Me." It's it's a it's a song where you know everybody tells you what they are, but I'm about to tell you what I'm not. <laughs> and by doing that, I'm actually telling you what I am. Um, I also <laughs> have two really dope collaborations that I'm really proud of. One called "Tattoo" with uh, with an artist called Visionaire. He's a um, he's an anonymous artist who, who's his platform is about creating a, a collective community experience. So that's why he said if I'm the face of the brand, then it defeats the purpose. So that's why he operates cool. anonymous. Gotcha. The others with my, my boy from uh, okay, I do have to say his name now because he's the one I mentioned earlier. You uh, don't have to if you don't want to because I don't yeah, feel like editing any video. <laughs> His name's Power Q. Uh, we've got a collaboration called Polaroid. It's about living life in the moment. Uh, it's on his album. It's really dope. So you can find all that on my uh, my Spotify. I'm streaming everywhere. Cool, cool. And and I produced what... it. <laughs> okay, bet. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, any other social media you're on? You mentioned Twitter. Are you on YouTube as well, or uh, Facebook page or something? Anything Those else? Are you I am on Facebook, but it, it, it's not a whole. Lot okay. <laughs> it's just you... repost. For IG. IG's the main one. Um, Okay. YouTube is in development, working on a whole lot of content, like uh, the behind the scenes of me building my studio. Um, Twitter is active, loosely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I tweeted this morning from the from the bathroom. <laughs> um, and you mentioned something that was, um, man, because my mind moves so fast with certain things. Um, You're a producer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. We're creators. Um, IG and you were thinking about the type of content to post and what came to mind is the insights um do you have a business account on ig oh yeah first thing i did cool cool and you check the insights regularly to I see do. what okay cool cool yeah um because a lot of producers don't know well i won't say a lot but most of them that hit me up or whatever never heard of a business uh, ig account so basically um yeah i'll let you you want to speak on the difference between the regular version and the business account and it's free it is free uh, basically uh do it <laughs> so, um, yeah it, the insights he's referring to are it tells you not only the likes that you're uh getting on your post but where they're coming from your demographics uh age range uh locations uh you know who's seeing your posts uh when you look at your story there's a little button at the bottom that shows you exactly who who looks so now everybody's gonna go see who's creeping on them um, <laughs> oh and here's a really cool thing about the stories 
not only does it tell you who's looking at it, but it'll break it down. Now, it doesn't tell you, it doesn't go into detail telling you which of the people that saw it are doing this, but it'll tell you how many people went on to the next, like if you have multiple stories, uh-huh. like, let's yeah. say 10 stories that day, it'll tell you how many went to the next one, how many exited, how many um, went back, which means, oh, what was that? I got to go back and see it because you know they're, they're momentary. So I, I got to go yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that was in there one day. Yeah. Yeah, so it tells what. It, you know, one person might look at it as, oh, only 10 people saw my story. Or you could look at it as, okay, 10 people saw my story. Three of them clicked forward. Three of them, uh, two of them went to my page. Right. One of them went back and looked at my content. And so, okay, you can break that down and okay, what were they going back to look at? Which post made them go to my page? Okay, now I should be posting more of that. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I stumbled on that one time looking at seeing like, cause I posted, um on a story you can put like ask a question or do a poll or whatever and i was looking at the stats on that and then i ran across that i'm like oh it even tells you where they go after they look at a story post um they also do that on post too like whatever you post um actually if you go into main insights you can see the options where basically if a person goes to your bio and clicks the link that's a that's a gem right there Basically, you can check to see which post has the most people going to the link in your bio. So that's a that's a big one. Um, another one, I mean, of course, there's reach and uh, engagement's a big one. But also, you can tell this is a, a good one too. Um, you can tell how many people are visiting your account at what times and which day. You use that one? Oh yeah. So it, it helps you. So I throughout the month of January, like I was telling you, I was posting pretty frequently. I was posting. I started by posting the same time every day. Then I was like, all right, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's see which times are working. Some of that was on purpose. Yeah, I did that, yeah. For, for uh, scientific reasons. And some of that was just, I forgot to post. So I was like, oh, I got to post this before I call it a day. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> but as long as I get it done today, like for, for my accountability sake, I got it up. Um, but by doing that, it, it allowed me to see, okay, which times of the day are working. Uh, and this is another thing that... Uh, to tie back to Rick Barker was talking about um, mm-hmm. the way people use the different social media is different like Facebook is appointment viewing Inst- uh, Instagram is more you know in the morning when you first wake up while you're on your lunch break um, you know real quick glimpses Twitter is uh, I forgot Twitter that's more of a steady stream yeah Twitter is yeah, very <laughs> frequent yeah Twitter is crazy man <laughs> and here's the crazy part I used to be so active on Twitter like back in college <laughs> Cause I was just, you know, I was just running my mouth a whole lot like, back in the day. You know, I was running three blogs at the time. Um, I had a lot to say back then. <laughs> so Twitter was easy back then, but now it's just like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm pretty reserved in nature. I don't, I don't talk a whole lot. I like to walk when I like to talk. So t- Twitter isn't actually a ga- the game for me right now, but I, I know I got to get back on there. But, like, um, but as far as Instagram goes, you got to know like how people are consuming, not just when. So that helps when you decide what kind of content you're going to post. And that works for any platform, I think. Like, doesn't matter what platform you use, learn about what content they're consuming and how it affects them. And of course, the bottom line, like what results are you getting by this post? Like if I post a bunch of producer memes on their Sounds for Producers IG channel, uh, account, make sure you, and the channel right here, make sure you subscribe. And also on the IG uh, Sounds for Producers, like the biggest post on the ig is memes (laughs) they work (laughs) yeah i made up some crazy memes yeah yeah crazy memes to this day and then i'll post like the most gems that i didn't want to give out but i gave them out anyway and it'll end up like the 40th (laughs) option below all these memes i'm like yo you know what i just told you you can do in fl studio would you like this meme so I mean, I'm not knocking it. It's just you learn what people consume and what they like. So on that particular platform. Question for you. Yeah. Here's something we didn't, we didn't tap into and I wanted to, but it's just not something I speak on from personal experience. Here's another thing you can do with an IG business account ads. Now you, sir, uh, actually have a tangible product you're sending people to. You have a BeatStars page. You have your website. I'm more, I work more on, on the back end as far as being a producer. So do you run ads? And what, what are your thoughts on running ads on Instagram versus other platforms? Um, I tried. Yeah, I ran ads for years. Um, right now, I'm in the 
doing something new and I'm actually working on click funnels now so I'm about to cook mm-hmm. up some ads on that um so click funnels is crazy to me and it's it's next next it's the hot stuff right now so uh running ads on IG I tried the little post that you can run right in IG not much success with that um they were like I mean a lot of views and likes and stuff but I'm looking for a higher result you know like giving value to customers you know and and leads um but ads running ads on facebook i i ran ads tons of ads <laughs> we're talking thousands of dollars and um i learned a lot running ads um but right now i'm not doing it but i definitely recommend it because what it's doing it's broadening your reach you know it's you're you're basically spending money learning the craft of marketing learning the craft of writing ads copy uh, basically getting leads and you're extending your reach with that energy and money so what i can do i can just hit up every artist on ig and spend eight hours a day you know that's you know the money energy exchange you know what i mean so you stay act staying active posting and whatnot and also doing ads is 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 the business man so literally <laughs> it's the business man but yeah i definitely run a lot of ads man it's it's a craft and i i'm really jumping into the marketing side because i don't know like before you even see me on beatstar like a lot of people i was in the dark you know what i mean so now that i'm stepping out more in front of camera doing tons of like daily content and having strategies like all i was doing is making beats i didn't have any business strategies you know what i'm saying so now that I know about ads, I, I, you know, have really great mentors that taught me about this whole other side. It's vital for producers because you got to be able to have is basically capital. You know, you got to have at least uh, I heard the rule five dollars a day to start with is cool um, for ads uh, starting out. And that way you have data and you get to see how people respond to certain things and you can switch up ads and just see what you know, you're, you're testing the waters. And when you start seeing things work, you can start putting more money in and, and stuff like that. But um, definitely have capital as a business owner. I mean, you're an artist, you're a producer, you're a business owner, you know, and, and you need results. Likes don't pay the bills. <laughs> you know what I mean? And by the way, there's some loot kits in the description. <laughs> hey, tangible product, man. Yeah, man. We got a new one coming out, too. Um. I'm really excited. Uh, yeah, some new my, products uh, coming. Uh, add some more sounds to the uh, to the arsenal. I've been um, I've been using Cymatics real heavy. Cause yeah, shout out to Cymatics. Yeah. yeah, their stuff is A1. Uh, but you know, I gotta diversify the palette a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's abundance everywhere, you know. And I gotta say this almost in every video, like producers and creatives, people in general tend to feel like. I can get some nuggets at McDonald's, but I don't know about that Whopper at Burger King. You see what I'm saying? Like they, you can get whatever you want from anywhere, as long as you're happy Something with it. Saucy. Right? Exactly. Exactly. You and, can, and, and on that note, sorry, I had to preach a little bit. Make sure yeah. you sauce it. Stop all that copy and paste. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, speaking of that, there's tons of producers that. I basically I have a video on this where I flip pretty much all the loops in our in our lineup right now at sounds for producers um, I flip pretty much anything MIDI data whatever and I show you different creative ways that producers can run with this stuff just taking it and then plopping it in or leaving it at the same key you know not changing anything that is a extreme lazy way of creativity <laughs> and I doubt you'll sell that much because it's received by the listener you're an artist you know when something like yeah that's i ain't feeling that man like the more energy you put into it the creative energy the more you'll get out of it basically so and i got a tons of videos on on that particular thing where i'm flipping everything and showing you different techniques so make sure y'all y'all check that out but that is very important i'm glad you said that you know um, I, i'm gonna die on that hill <laughs> oh okay <laughs> I ain't gonna <laughs> we'll stop there so you won't bash everybody <laughs> and I don't think you we said one I talked about that but uh <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I put in a 
lot of time into this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm about to cut her mess. Yeah, I, I won't let you uh, go go out like that in the video. So, <laughs> um, there's something else. Oh, T Pain said, um, anything viral lasts for like three days. After three days, no one cares. What do you think about that? Is yeah, there like, some truth to that? There's some truth. I, I don't know if the number is correct. I'm not going to debate him on that um, yeah. because it's, you know, he's probably put a lot of, t Pain doesn't seem like the type that would talk without knowing what he's talking about. So I don't know about the three days thing, but what he's saying basically, you can put any number on it, but basically what he's saying is, you know, fads are momentary. The stuff that lasts is the stuff that that's rooted in, in solid quality, um, you know, over you know flash in the pan momentary like bs you know what i mean you know some stuff will hit for a second mm -hmm. uh, but then you never hear from them again mm -hmm. you know to pull out a cliche the one hit wonders and and i i want to create classics man i want stuff i have this conversation uh, it, it it's related enough we can have this discussion i have this discussion at work with my people all the time i'm like Cause I, I sometimes I'll put my playlist on at work, just to keep the vibes. You know, we playing Motown, we playing you know a Michael Jackson playlist. And I always ask, who are we gonna be playing in 30, 40 years like this? These these people that was making music decades before I was even thought of. And here we are listening to new stuff. Who from our generation is doing that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Because we're so focused on the hit in the moment that we're not making stuff that lasts. Um. And, and the list we came up you know we, there are people doing stuff i'm not going to say the whole generation isn't making classes mm. you know some stuff will age better than others but it's like i was having a hard time putting names out there <laughs> yeah and everybody yeah. i was naming was people that's been around for a minute they're not new artists <laughs> right right yeah don't get me talking because you know I'm, I'm older than i look so i know exactly what you mean <laughs> so, uh, so that's kind of I, I feel like in, in, in a I know I stretched that but I feel like that's kind of what he's talking about in that same way so like yeah if virality is your game you just got to be willing to you got to be fluid you got to be okay and this is hot now let me hop on it but I got to figure out what's gonna be next and hop on it before everybody else does and a lot mm. of people can make a lot of money in the virality game uh, guy you were mentioning before that does the super remixes yeah yeah that's what I just you thought tap into that and, and that's fine if that's your business model. I'm not gonna speak down on it, but you just get, you gotta be flexible if that's your game. You right. gotta, and you gotta be uh, intuitive and know what's coming around the bend before everybody else gets to it. Because, you know, if, if like you said, if it, if it virally lasts three days and you, you coming in on the third day, like, <laughs> you right. lost, bro. Right, you lost, <laughs> that wave is gone. Here's a new wave. Yeah. They yeah. already on the next thing and you just catching on. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I was thinking, um, you touched on something that I was going to ask you about. See, I had like four questions lined up, man. Actually, what do you think about being a producer and balancing work life? Because I'm dealing with that right now. And I'm like in a transition, you know, like of leaving that steady paycheck <laughs> benefits man, oh, and I'm a father. So <laughs> I, oh my gosh, uh, it's, for the longest, all right, just so the people know, I'm 26, so I still have youth on my side, but I'm, I'm starting to tap into that old man zone, where it's like, <laughs> it's, and what I mean by that is, no, I'm not an old man by any means, but like, what I mean by that is like, the fatigue of it all is catching up with me, mm -hmm. whereas I used to be able to go work a full shift and come home and then sit up and make beats for another eight hours, then sleep two, three, four hours, and get up mm -hmm. and like, in the next day, and it's like, nothing happened, but now mm -hmm. it's like, I come home from work, I get home 8.30, I gotta cook. Now it's nine fifteen. I sit down to make a beat. I'm falling asleep in the studio by, by midnight. It's like, yeah, what did yeah. I really do? I'm not falling asleep on purpose. Right, <laughs> right. Body is hurt. Right, yeah. I trust um, me. Many so nights I've fallen asleep. <laughs> it, it's catching up to me. And where I used to just be able to go for hours, it's like now I gotta tighten up my routine now because it's like my time is a lot more limited. I'm also in a lot of other ventures. In addition to being an artist and producer, I'm, I'm tapping into another. I have a business team outside of this that we're working on some other stuff that's not even related to music. Um, so my time is getting more and more finite. So it, it's it's definitely impacting my quantity 
I, I will say that it's it's made my quality a lot better. I just sat down and listened to one of my BC the other day. I was like, and I listened to it side by side with another one I made just last year. And, I'm like, and why is not. that? Why is your quality getting better because of your time being limited? Because you got to make the most of the time you have. And I noticed this even in school. Um, I went to school in Philly. Uh, and in the last, my, my senior year, I commuted from Jersey. I, I lived with my aunt and uncle. And that commute was where I, I attributed a lot of my uh, progress as a producer because, you know, I'd be on the train for 40 minutes and I'm like, all right, let's see what I can do in this 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I do that actually. Yeah. I pulled the laptop out, laptop out on the train that 40 minutes, man. It made me have to like, all right, you don't have six hours uh, because you're a college student with nothing else to do all right. to just sit here and, and, and lollygag and, and oh let's see what happens no you got 40 minutes what you got to do with it <laughs> right exactly and, and that that made me sharpen my skills it's like you don't have all day oh, oh my stop coming up all right let's save this real quick uh it really made me fine-tune my game and, and now that my time is becoming limited again it's like all right time is money bro what you better do <laughs> yeah yeah it gives you that sense of urgency it's like there yo you go. That's it's, what it is. now or never yo <laughs> let's make this yeah yeah because i actually i used to do a series uh called lunchtime beats every day uh, i would make a a beat uh during my lunch hour and it's kind of hard because like when you're on video you're talking trying to explain what you're doing so it kind of slows you down because you know when you're just making a beat you're just flying through stuff you know we're experimenting uh without having to speak about it that's yeah, a skill. I, I gotta give you a shout out and all my other producers that, that do the videos, man. Because I, I I go live a lot when I'm making beats, and I find myself getting so lost in the beat that I forget I'm on live. <laughs> and that's awkward because people still, you know, doing the little wave emojis, and right? Trying to talk to you, and I'm just ignore. All <laughs> right, you're totally ignoring them. <laughs> it's a skill to be able to say exactly what you're doing and, and make it entertaining. Because like, <laughs> right, right. I go yeah. back and watch my lives. I'm not entertained by myself. The beats are fire. <laughs> hey, that's oh, God, what counts. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, appreciate it, man. It took time to like learn that because yeah, I used to do the same thing. I used to just make it, not say one word. And you got a visual. I'm on camera, and you know, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> so you're just looking yeah, at me. Like, I'm actually good at public speaking, but yeah. I don't know. You put the camera in the equation. This is a whole different ballgame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, there was some one more thing. Okay, so what kind of advice would you give producers that are working that nine to five or whatever day job that they're not happy with, but at the same time, they're still doing their music? Like what kind of advice along those lines could you give to those producers that are that want to make music, that want to make income with their music? Like what advice would you give them balancing their their day job and their passion i know it's a big question but you know that's a big question and and i'm glad you asked that because it'll i i know that i'm speaking to the camera and i'm speaking to a lot of producers that will be watching this but i'm also speaking to myself and and in that i have to say act with intent you know i can't tell you how many countless times i've sat down i open up fl studio I say let's make a beat nah man you got to go into it with like I need to make this type of beat. It's going to have this, you know, even something as simple as I need to make something with this key and this time signature at this BPM. Like just go into it with some kind of intention because it'll give you, what was that you said? A sense of urgency. Because mm -hmm. uh, we've all been there where we sit down, open up a blank project. And it's just like, what am I about to do? Now go into it with a, with some intention, especially as your time gets more and more limited. Mm -hmm. You don't have time for the lollygag and, and 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 the period of oh what am I about to do today? Now you got to go into it kind of knowing. Uh, something that helps me is uh, voice memos. Mm -hmm. like, how many times have you been out somewhere and you heard a melody in your head? It's like damn, I wish I could produce this right now. I have but thousands. Yeah, I got a thousand voice right memos. now on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Voice memos are amazing. You can talk to yourself, tell them this is this is kind of the vibe I'm going for. Hum it a little bit, or if you got 15 bucks to spare. Get the uh, FL Studio mobile app. I got oh, that yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> got that too? Yeah. Um, I did a 30 beats in 30 days challenge last year, and one of my beats was on the phone. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, that's what's up. Just have something where you can get ideas down as you come up with them during the day or when you're out, because you never know, like, when you might be stuck sitting in front of the computer. Right. Uh, you pull up that voice memo, it's like, oh, I forgot all about that. You got so many ideas you forgot you had. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it'll help you act with intent and, and also have a plan. Like, um, you know, even if you don't meet the quota, just set yourself a number. Like, I'm going to make this many beats this week. Um, because out of... You know, you're you're seasoned enough where if you say I'm gonna make seven beats, seven of those beats are gonna be dope. Not every put it, not every producer's gonna be there. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes if you make seven beats, only three of them are gonna be dope. So if you know that's your ratio, say I need to make seven beats this week so I can sell three of them. Right. Um, so give yourself a goal to work towards because if, you, if you're acting without intention, you just kind of running in a in a hamster wheel. Um, so that that's something. So yeah, I great. Just of... rambled on. No, <laughs> I just no. rambled on. But the main no. thing, mm-hmm. act with intent. Got you, man. Yeah, that's that's great advice, man. I I say it pretty much the same thing in a different way. I say um, have a vision or have a goal. So intent, you like you're touching on things. Know the what type of beat you're gonna make. You know what BPM range or know what melody or whatever. That's more on a micro level. On a macro level, I'm thinking like I'm making this beat for like right after this video. I'm making stuff for TV film. So I know in my head, creatively, where I'm going to go. Or like if I'm making a beat for artists, I'm like, okay, this is going to be for this artist. Like I envision these people, you know, like on whatever billboard or whatever, music videos, whatever. And I'm like, this is for him. Whoever else likes it, they're going to like it. But this is for this artist. So I kind of create getting that mindset about it's a tight beat thing, but I'm more like a very mental guy that really thinks about it. Okay. And also on a business level, like, yeah, basically. Yeah. And basically on a business level, acting with intent is like, okay, I'm going to make 200 bucks this week and I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to make this many beats and I'm going to market this stuff. See, I see my mentor has told me about this stuff because you kind of acting with intent also can be uh, having a destination, kind of the same thing. Um, So, you know what you're going to do at the end of the month business wise so you're setting that goal and uh i say that in so many videos because like producers like for years man i didn't have any direction you know i was just a workhorse i would just work 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 and without results but if you have some type of destination some type of goal some type of guidance and intent like you mentioned i like that word um you have focused energy instead of just energy you know what i mean so yeah yeah you touched you touched on something that i'm very passionate about and i always say in videos because i'm like without any type of goal man it's it's like remember um do you ever watch the show the office i've seen a few episodes there's one episode where they were following the gps in the car and they ended up driving in the river Literally, they drove a car in a <laughs> following the GPS. So basically, they had the wrong destination and they didn't know where they're going. So if you apply that to your business as well as on a um, micro level as well, like you mentioned, knowing what type of music you're going to make, uh, knowing what artists you're going to make it for or knowing what other moves you're going to make each year. Like I have I'm planning out my entire year. It's February now. I don't know when you all see this video, probably today. I don't know. But um, I'm planning out the whole year with set goals. I have 60 day, 90 day, all that stuff. So it's very important to have um, some type of structure when you're working a business. And all these multi-millionaire, billion businesses, they have business goals. You know what I mean? It's very important. And I wish I knew this years ago, but it's better that I know this now and then never know it. You know what I mean? So... Hey, yeah, wasn't built in the day, right? exactly exactly and uh did you want to speak on uh before we leave i know we went over time i bet about that um cool. did you want to speak on um producers uh about having patience because i know a lot of them just want a bunch of placements and just want to make money and don't really care how they get there or or they're yes. too anxious for that you know destination yes i i can speak to y'all because i'm one of y'all 
I want it all right now too. Who doesn't? But <laughs> you gotta. It, it's it's important that you establish an infrastructure. It's like, let's say you were to get that big placement today. Are you prepared for the follow up? Now, some of y'all, if the answer is yes, go out there and get it. But you gotta, you know, business is built on supply and demand, and you gotta have the habits in place to your daily, you know, your daily life. You know your your routine, your structure. How many beats am I making? You gotta be prepared that um, you know. Let's say you blow up, can you follow it up? Are you ready for that? And not everybody is. I, even I'm not. My mm-hmm. business. <laughs> I still have to get the rest of my stuff set up. But mm-hmm. that's what I'm working on right now. And 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 daily, I'm putting in more work to create more product so that you know I have a catalog. You know, for a while I had at one point I think I had a, a ten to one project to beat ratio. Like I've got over a thousand project files, but not that many beats. I've, I've now since caught up. I went back and finished a lot of them. But oh, you're one of those. Oh, I yes. started out like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, my mind is crazy. It's all over the place. Like uh, I'll, I'll be making a beat, and I'll hear a loop for another one, and go and start that one. Yeah, I um, used to do but, that. Yeah. But you, you gotta have the infrastructure in place. Whatever your business model is, everybody's is different. It's not a cookie cutter business. You know, you have to find what works for you. But whatever is your lane, or whatever is your your path. You got to be able to be set up for um, whatever your future is, because you know if you can't handle a hundred bucks, how are you gonna handle ten thousand? Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. It, that money it, goes just as quick as a hundred dollars goes. If you don't yeah, know what you're doing with it. yeah, that actually reminds me of like artists that come out with a killer single, and I've been DJing forever, man, and like I see that for years. Like they'll have the biggest song of the year but no follow-up like there's the second single comes out and you're like is that the same artist <laughs> that was trash man how did the label release that <laughs> you know what i mean i don't know if you ever yeah. caught eye of that where oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> so for all those producers out there that want placements immediately i mean it's great but also understand the business too because if you're just signing away and you made the whole beat and some big producer well, i mean you gotta have to think about it because it's whether you want the income or you want your name out there you know what i mean and try to get money on the back end so let's say i make a beat timbaland wants it and i get no credit for it shout out to tim um but i'm in his circle now and i'm making oh. 10 more beats for him and it's going to his artist so you kind of have to leverage, you know, certain things as a helps to know what you're looking for too. Exactly, exactly, and that's what we meant by intent, and also like having a goal. So and another uh, thing to follow up on that, it's like because yeah. I don't, I don't know, we're gonna have a variety of producers at different levels, uh, entry level, and 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 you're also connected to you know big name producers is doing a lot. So you know somebody might hear this and say, oh yeah, uh, and then there's somebody that might hear this and be like, oh I never knew that. There's a lot of money out there other than big label placements There's oh a yeah a lot of out there man oh, i'll yeah. ask one question and leave it on this how many how many shows out there are there in the universe and when's the last time you heard one without music in it oh yeah yeah not go to your homework <laughs> oh yeah definitely yeah and and how many are still new ones you know there's always new shows netflix all those exclusives amazon hulu amazon yeah netflix. amazon come on man it's, espn it's, <laughs> oh yeah it's funny my stuff is pitched to him. yeah e- espn has shout out to espn we're work, working on something so yeah um definitely sync licensing is what you're referring to is is another oh, yeah. avenue for producers um let me just name a few um of course there's artists there's label stuff there's also youtubers that run their own steady channels you can sell to them as well um also either even like local companies i know this uh eastern motors uh, you ever heard of them eastern motors yeah Jeff. they yeah, have they. like online ads and they use beats in them and i was like listen i was like yo that's a new ad and a new beat so like local businesses use music so if you can lock that in you know that's another avenue and of course online stuff so diversification with your craft is vital um I'm, that's just a few I'm gonna drop on them. Did I miss 
I'm sure I missed some, but did you want to share no, any? But that's because there's so much out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And of course, you know, you have different ways to reach everyone, but you also have to put in effort, like be uncomfortable. Like I made cold calls. I sent cold emails to people. I mean, you got to, you know, put yourself out there because nobody's going to hear you. <laughs> Network, man. Network. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so to close, did you want to say anything to the community? Um, one last statement, you know, that you want to say to the Sounds for Producers community. It's pretty small right now, but I have a good feeling, you know, people are catching on, especially after this interview. And thanks for, you know, uh, the interview, by the way. Of course, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak out, maybe help some people, let you know that you're not alone in this game. Um, you know, sure. don't be afraid to build with people, man. That's another way to just, I'm, I'm going to leave on that. Like, don't be afraid to build with people. Like, this is this is not a game where it's like, yeah, it's competition, and you should be, you know, energized by that. But it's also community, man. Build with your people, you know, work with other producers, and, and, and continue to grow your network because your network is your net worth. And, and it's not, it, it, you know, this is not, you know, for some people it's overnight, but even those people you think are overnight, they've been working for, for years too. So, you know, stick with it. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not a sprint, man. It's a marathon. The marathon continues. Shout out to Nip, Nipsey Hustle, man. Um, and it wasn't built in the day. You are defined over time because you're no longer the person you were, but you're not yet who you're supposed to be. So keep working. There you go. That's King Rome right there. Did you want to shout out your IG? I mean, your social handles one more time so people can take in the music. One more time. Yeah, you can find me everywhere. I, I made sure everything's the same. It's King Rome spelled like a millennial. That's K-X-N-G-R-X-M-E. And for all y'all looking for the story for why I spelled it that way, Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stop the recording again. Oh, before I forget, uh, make sure you guys... And gals, shout out to the female producers out there. I know y'all still exist. I got to show love to yeah, all Lost producers. Lost Mine Official, I see you. Huh? Lost Mine Official, she's dope. Okay, there you go. Uh, make sure y'all um, hit the sub button. Click the bell as well so you're alerted to more new videos. Maybe we'll do another interview. Um, also, uh, give it a thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. If you you know enjoyed the video, if you laughed at something we said, or you got some type of value from it. Make sure you hit the sub button because it got more, 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 more content, more value. And it's all for the community. And I'm glad that, you know, we're doing this because it's like it's more than just loops. You know what I mean? It's more than just sounds and just what doll you use. We touched on a lot of different topics and we could talk another hour. I know y'all probably bored by now, but <laughs> we'll, we'll get you at another time. So, yeah. Make sure you hit the sub button and thank you, man. Really appreciate you doing this first official interview video for the channel, man. Really appreciate man, it. I'm excited. <laughs> awesome, man. I'll probably post it right away. I don't have to edit anything. I don't think we curse. Well, if we curse, it's all good. So I'll just. I, think I said yes. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, man. Yeah, I'll make it work. Mm -hmm.